Hi, welcome back to Boiling Hops. We're just so glad you're here. Uh, if you get an opportunity, uh, subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel or have a couple of friends subscribe to it. It's really, really going well and I really appreciate all the compliments, the comments, uh, and the feedback that I get from everybody. This is just so wonderful. One of the most recent ones is um, someone who is hearing impaired and there are, if you just go down to the bottom of the screen, there's a little CC box when you click that, it has subtitles. Uh, all I've got to do is go in and edit them to make sure that you know the subtitles match exactly what's being said. Um, but that's just another one of those uh, things that, that, that YouTube provides for our hearing impaired uh, viewers. So please share that. Um, you know, today it, what we're going to do is, we already hooked up the uh, Rec C100 PID. Today we're going to do the TA4. It's called the MyPen TA4. Uh, and just so you'll know, all of these PIDs, it's, that's a proportional integral derivative controller. And it, as we described before, uh, what that does is it tests the temperature that you set that you want to look for. And it figures out how much power does it take to get there. And then once it gets there, what does it require to stay? So instead of having a constant on 100% and then off, and then your temperature fluctuating, what it does is it figures out the amount of power required to maintain a very, very small band, what we would call the band of excellence. And it levels out that temperature fluctuation very, very slightly. So what it does is instead of pro providing the total amperage uh, to your heating element, it provides only that amount of amperage that's necessary to maintain that temperature so that your temperature doesn't spike up and down, up and down, thus becoming uncontrollable. Does that make sense? I hope it really does. It's really, really, a, it's, it's an amazing factoid about these PIDs, and they're relatively inexpensive. This whole setup here, run me, probably costs about 35, 40 bucks. Uh, all you gotta do is just be able to hook it up. Now, let me give you a little bit of information about amps and power. So you know and, that every time like George that. brings out the whiteboard, we're gonna do just a little bit of math, but it's not complicated. So here's how this really works. Well, let's talk about amperage. Amperage, uh, and if you think about this, a good analogy is like a water hose. Uh, if you have a half inch water hose and you've got X amount of gallons per minute flowing through that water hose, uh, that's analogous or the same thing as, or very similar to a wire with so many volts. So that's a good comparison. It's not 100% accurate, but it's really, really close. Okay. If you increase, if you don't increase the amount of water, but you increase the flow, the pressure, let's say for instance, you put a nozzle on it. And when it comes out, that's the increase in the flow, but it's not an increase in the amount. That is the same thing as in a wire, you'll have as an example, 120 volts, but you increase the flow of that. So it's the pressure, the pressure of the electricity going through that uh, is what the is measured is amperage and that's why we have the 15 20 30 and it, it goes up amp circuit breakers in our homes so that when a system uh, goes over that limit that circuit breaker shuts off it shuts the power down to prevent any damage to any of the utilities and or uh, preventing the potential of a fire because with the increase of that power is also the increase of fire danger and it's also the increase of heat. So, I mean, that's pretty much it in layman's terms. So uh, what we need to understand though is we just need to understand what is really happening at the same time. Now this PID controller, what it does is it measures because it's proportional, integral, and derivative, PID. Uh, what it does is it's gonna measure based on, with a calculation, it's gonna measure based on the temperature perceived and the temperature you set, and it's gonna try to figure out, well, how much of this power do I really need to maintain that temperature? Instead of putting 100% of the power through it, and when it hits it, good, I shut it off. And then, uh-oh, it went below it, let me turn it back on 100%, Okay, now, then turn it back off. So instead of doing that, what it does 
is it senses and it figures out what is the required power necessary in order to maintain that band of excellence. You know, here, here's our board. Let's do it real quick. Uh, now, the formula for figuring out amperage and amperage requirement is relatively straightforward. It's going to be watts divided by volts. Now, it's, let's take, for instance, like a home. Your, most of your homes are 120 volts, all right? So if we got 120 volts, oops, I put that in the wrong place. <laughs> we got 120 volts, and we put a 40-watt light bulb on there, a 40-watt light bulb, and which I have here, as a matter of fact, that's going to require about 0.33, three, three, now I say about, yeah, it's going to require 0 0.33333 three, 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 three amps. So that's a very, very small amount in order to make that light bulb work. Uh, and it won't require any more. So it would be, it's difficult, if not, not impossible, but it's difficult to detect unless you have a digital amp meter. And we've got one of those, and I'll show you that. Now, but let's take another example, because you see I've got this 1500 watt heating band and when you use a 1500 watt, now and use the same formula no matter what it is, the watt, if you put an 1100 watt heating element or if you've got an 1800 watt heating element, use the same formula. Okay, let's do this again. Remember watts, we got a 1500 watt heating element and we're going to run, run it on a 120 volt circuit. So when that is on at 100%, the requirement is 12.5 amps. That's why I always tell you to make sure you're on at least a 15 amp circuit. A 20 amp circuit's a bit safer because of the larger wires, the conductors. Uh, so we either use, when we're, when we're using our solid state relay, we're going to use a 25 amp solid state relay because it'll control, it'll, it'll handle 25 amps. We don't want to go to 25 amps, but it'll handle it. Now if we had a 10 amp, we'd have a challenge, it would burn it up. So, and it, you just do this as simple into a calculator, is just type in your 1500 watts divided by 120, and it would equal 12.5 amps. See how simple that is? So, just make sure you've got the proper amperage in the circuit that you're gonna use, and uh, voila, your PID controller will work. Now, what that also means is that at full power, that this heater heating band will only pull 12.5 amps. So if you've got 12.5 amps on this, through this one circuit, I wouldn't plug a hair dryer in there. I wouldn't plug the coffee machine into the same circuit either because you're, you're definitely stand a chance of blowing that, blowing that circuit. Okay, uh, and what will happen is, is, you know, your fuse will blow and then you, know, you try to figure out why everything in that corner of the house is not working anymore. So, Try to find an isolated circuit that you can do that in, or a circuit that has a higher amperage. Um, all right, look, um, I've got this board here, and I was going to show you this again because remember we, we, we wired this up, and this is the uh, Rex C100, and I'm going to turn it on here in just a second, so I've got my PID controller, and you can see i got this menagerie of uh, wires all over the place. This is my solid state relay, and I've got that connected to just one receptacle. And I've got a light plugged into it now. In a moment, we're going to plug that heater element in. I'm going to show you how this all works. Because remember I told you about amps. Uh, when we measure amperage, <coughs> amperage is measured on the wire that's carrying the load. So the load that is going from your power source to your power requirement, it's only one wire. Uh, so you, that's where you measure. So we're going to measure around the load wire. And remember when we wired this up, and when we do this on the, the TA4, we'll do this very slowly and methodically so you'll understand what I'm talking about. From pin number two off of our solid state relay, there's one black wire. And your black wire, in almost all instances, is going to be your what we call the hot. Your white wire will normally be, should be, your neutral. So this is the load carrying wire, and it goes to your receptacle. So we can measure, if we cut this wire, we can measure from one end to the other what the load is, which is the amps. Uh, there's another way to measure that. 
and that is magnetic inductance. Uh, long story, but what it is is you put a clamp, uh, you get a, a multimeter with a clamp, it's called an amp meter, and you lay that, you put that around that wire, and then you can read the scale, it'll tell you what the amperage is going through that wire. So that's one option. The other option is what I told you about. We're gonna, when we build our TA4, we're going to build it with this in line. This is an amp meter. And you'll see that. I bought that online, too. So we add that, and this goes from 0 to 20 amps. So we've got plenty of room in there to measure. We're going to place this amp meter in this line. So we're going to cut this line, and we're going to we're going to put one lead on one point, and we're going to put the other lead from the meter, which is this one, and that's going to go to our receptacle. So we'll have an in and an out, and that will measure the amperage that's going through this line, because that's the one we want to measure. We want to know how many amps are going through that line. Uh, and that just gives us an idea. See, what's neat about this is when you're sitting back and you're going, hey guys, check out my PID. Now, let me show you how this works. Instead of trying to explain it, this meter will show them. They'll watch it and it'll be on 12.5 amps. Oh, 12.5 amps. Oh, as it starts getting closer, it'll go, oh, 10 amps. Oh, that's all I needed. It'll go off. Five amps. It'll go off. Then it'll go, oh, wait a minute. Nine amps. And then it'll go back off. Then it'll go five amps. Then it'll go three amps. Good, that's all I need. Three amps. Every once in a while, it'll hit it. So that's what that's good for. You can say, see, it works. So we're going to put that in there, just sort of like a safety feature. All right, let's turn this on. Boom, it's turned on. Now you notice my PID uh, goes through its own cell check, and I've already got it set to, I think you can see my light, came, there's my lights coming on and going off. Um, I've got it set to 26 degrees Celsius, and its perceived value right now is 26. So let's do something here. Let's, you hit the set button, and then this is the up or down arrow, and we're going to increase. It's 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and then you hit set again. Now, we've set this PID to continue to provide power until the top number, the perceived value, hits 35. And you'll notice that my light bulb stayed on. So right now what it's trying to do is it's trying to provide enough power for that light bulb or this sensor, which is the thermal couple, to sense 35 degrees Celsius. All right. Now remember we said that we were going to use this wire that we were using? That's, this is the load wire that comes from the solid state relay to the receptacle. Now if I plug in if I plug in my heater band, well, first of all, let me show you this. You'll notice that and I've got this set on amps, and I'm going to test this. There we go. 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Well, remember, a 40-watt 40, 40 light bulb only requires 0.3 amps. Now, here's the difference, though, is when we plug in a larger load requirement, that amperage is going to go up. Now, this time, when we check those amps, 12.6, 12.5, 12.5. Every time that light comes on, it's measuring the load requirement for this heater band, which is 12.5. Now, it'll continue to say at 12.5 until it reaches the appropriate temperature. Now, ah, let me pull that off. Now, this is an analog scale. And what this will do, this will show you, you'll see the, the needle swing. And every time that needle swings, it swings up to 12.5 and drops off. 12.5 and drops off. And it'll continue to do that. And that's what this one is going to do for us. So we're just going to put one in line so it's there permanently. So now I can also, let's reset this and let's set this down to, uh, let's go down, back down to 27. Now let's see what the, re, the power requirement is when it's at 27. Well, nothing actually because it's at the right temperature. <laughs> so there it goes. It hit it 
point two. Ooh, point one. It hit 11. It hit 12. It hit nine, six, seven. So you see what it's doing is it's trying to figure out, I said, how much power does it really need? And it's just kicking on, kicking on and off, kicking on and off with just the appropriate amount of power. So I hope that makes sense to you. Now, it, it'll make a lot more sense as we start to put this together. Now, I'm sorry that this is getting, becoming a long video, but it's necessary to explain all these small intricacies uh, in order for you to be safe. And we want you to be safe. And we also want you to be successful at this. So work with me. Let's build this one time. Uh, one time so that you'll always have it forever and ever and ever. And all you got to do is plug it in. Here's what we're going to wind up doing. Let me turn this one off. We're going to put on them flat rocker switches on it. You know, the on off. Yeah, we're going to put the on off switch on the box. Just make it like nice and neat. Um, we're going to wire this up so that the top receptacle is only going to be on for the uh, your heater element and we're going to leave the bottom receptacle we might even put this switch on it so you can just plug your water pump into that so we're going to separate these two so we'll have one that works for the heater and one that works only for the water pump and you'll be able to turn the water pump on and off I don't know maybe we'll use this one to turn the whole system on or off but uh, that's what the plan is anyway I, we'll get there you can do it many many different ways Again, we're going to use the uh, 25 amp solid state relay, and that's going to come in real handy. We are going to put the amp meter inside our box so we can watch what happens. Uh, and of course, we've got that heat sink, and the heat sink just dissipates the heat that's generated uh, when you've got all of those amps running through this. Um, probably could get by without it, but I'd always recommend to have one in there just so that it dissipates the heat. These things will heat up a little bit, but they, they're not really that, that hot. Uh, but of course, we're going to always err on the side of caution and safety. Now, let me see, is there anything else I've got out here? No, I've just got my tools set up. Uh, I'm going to use a drill and my Dremel, and we're going to get to cutting and wiring, and uh, please, Hang in there with us, and uh, we'll show you exactly how this is all put together, and you too can have your own PID controller. It's either that, or you can go online, and uh, th there's, there are retailers out there that will sell these things to you for $260, bucks, uh, and people will pay it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, let's wire one of these up together. We'll see you in a minute.